Christ's command to his followers before his ascension to heaven was for them to be his witnesses in Jerusalem, all Judea, in Samaria, and to the uttermost part of the earth. Our Lord did not intend for the good news of his death and resurrection to stay local, but instead it was to be taken globally. In this third section of Acts, the adventure continues as the gospel is taken to the ends of the earth. Let's join Scott Pauley now for today's study. Everybody has a story to tell. Now, your story is not my story. My story is not your story, but we all have one. And it really is not just our story. If you're a true Christian, it is the story of God working in your life. It's not just you. It's the story of Christ in you. And at every opportunity, the Lord's people ought to be ready, willing, excited to open their mouth and share their story. In Acts chapter number 22, the Apostle Paul has been brought before his persecutors. He has asked for permission to speak. They've granted it. And we read his words. It is powerful. In fact, as we read through Acts chapter number 22, you're going to get glimmers of uh, the original account of Paul's uh, encounter with the Lord Jesus on the road to Damascus. So many parallels here because he's just sharing his story. This is nothing new, but it is fresh to him because Paul never got over the wonder of what Jesus Christ had done for him. I wonder, have we? Maybe if we were still so excited as we were the day we got saved, if the joy of his salvation was real in our soul, like Paul, we would want to share our story too. Let's listen in as he speaks. Acts 22, verse 1, Men, brethren, and fathers, hear ye my defense, which I make now unto you. And when they heard that he spake in the Hebrew tongue to them, they kept the more silence, and he saith, I am verily a man which am a Jew, born in Tarsus, a city in Cilicia, yet brought up in this city at the feet of Gamaliel, and taught according to the perfect manner of the law of the fathers, and was zealous toward God, as ye all are this day. Just a couple of observations as we begin. The first is that his defense is actually offense. <laughs> I love this. Uh, the greatest defense uh, truly is to go on the offensive for Christ. It was Spurgeon that said, you don't have to defend the gospel. You don't have to defend the truth. It's like a caged lion. You just open the door and let it out. It will do its work. And so he really is just giving his witness. It's not about him. It's about Christ. A second thing I would point out to you is that he started with a common denominator. He identified himself as a human being, as someone they would have known as someone from that place. So he found some common ground, a starting point to begin his witness for Christ. Then he gets into the real crux of it in verse number four. And I persecuted this way unto the death. Remember, before they were called Christians, they were followers of the way. Jesus said he was the way. He said, I persecuted this way unto the death, binding and delivering into prisons both men and women, as also the high priest doth bear me witness, and all the estate of the elders from whom also I received letters unto the brethren and went to Damascus to bring them which were there bound unto Jerusalem for to be punished. And it came to pass that as I made my journey and was come nigh unto Damascus about noon, suddenly there shone from heaven a great light round about me. And I fell unto the ground and heard a voice saying unto me, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And I answered, Who art thou, Lord? And he said unto me, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom thou persecutest. And they that were with me saw indeed the light and were afraid, but they heard not the voice of him that spake to me. And I said, What shall I do, Lord? And the Lord said unto me, Arise and go into Damascus, and there it shall be told thee of all things which are appointed for thee to do. And when I could not see for the glory of that light, being led by the hand of them that were with me, I came into Damascus. And one Ananias, a devout man, according to the law, having a good report of all the Jews which dwelt there, came unto me and stood and said unto me, Brother Saul, receive thy sight. And the same hour I looked up upon him. And he said, The God of our fathers hath chosen thee, that thou shouldest know his will, and see that just one, and shouldest hear the voice of his mouth. For thou shalt be his witness, 
unto all men of what thou hast seen and heard. And now why tarriest thou? Arise, and be baptized, and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. What does Paul do? He doesn't try to explain everything. He doesn't get into the weeds in his debate here and discussion. He simply shares his story. Friends, there is power in a personal testimony. Uh, There is, is nothing quite like the influence of a changed life, of a changed heart. I remember years ago, being seated on an airplane next to a businessman who was an elder in a religious group that does not hold to the deity of Christ, uh, a false religion. And uh, frankly, when I found out his religious background, my mind started turning and thinking of all the questions he was going to ask me. And I still remember the Holy Spirit said to me, just give him your story. Just share your story. You see, lots of people who will never listen to a sermon will listen to your story. Many people uh, who would love to get off in some debate somewhere Uh, are taken back when you just start sharing what Christ means to you and what he's done in your life. I still remember sharing my story with that man. And after a long discussion, this man, instead of debating or arguing with me, simply said to me, Sir, I've been around religious movements all of my life, but I've never heard anything like what you've just shared with me. I I learned something that day. I learned that many people who know about religious things know nothing about the person and work of Jesus Christ. Friends, just share your story. Uh, Did you know that uh, the Apostle Paul, throughout the book of Acts, every time he's put on trial, every time he's called into account for something, he goes back to the Damascus Road experience. Why is that? He never gets far removed from what Christ has done in his life. Uh, He's the most educated man in the room. He's got the equivalent of three PhDs, but he just shares his story. Charles Haddon Spurgeon, the Prince of Preachers, whose printed sermons are larger than the Encyclopedia Britannica, in his written sermons, shares the story of his conversion as a teenage boy about 300 times, almost like he had nothing better to say, nothing more exciting to share than simply what Jesus Christ had done in his life. May I simply share this with you today. There are three parts to your story as a believer. The first part is your life before Christ, B.C., before Christ. And that's what Paul talked about when he talked about his religious background, but the fact that he did not know this way. Never glorify sin when you're talking about your past, but you must begin by explaining to people that you were once lost as well. Uh, So your story includes your past. Then your story must include, secondly, how you came to know Christ. By the way, everybody's experience is different, but the reality is the same. I wasn't on the road to Damascus. I never saw Christ physically. I never had a great light blind my eyes. So the details are going to vary from person to person. The common denominator is Christ. Don't talk about your prayer, your emotion, uh, the meeting, your religious experience. Talk about the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember, it's his story in your life. So when you share your story, talk about your life before Christ, how you came to know Christ, and then thirdly, what Christ means to you now. You see how Paul shifted to this? This is perhaps the most neglected part of many people's testimony. It shouldn't be past tense. It must be present tense. What does the Lord mean to you today? What difference has Christ made in your life? This is what is so powerful. I want to challenge every person listening to me today to do one of two things. If you don't know Jesus, you have no story to tell. If you don't know him, believe on him today and come to know him as your Savior. And if you are a Christian, friend, share your story. Start right where you are. Though no more scripture is being written, The story of the furtherance of the gospel is being written at this very moment, and we get to be part of that story. The heart of our Savior is as passionate for the lost today as it was just before he ascended in Acts 1. Will you get in on what God is doing in the world today to reach the lost with the gospel? This is why enjoying the journey exists to encourage and to equip you in the work of the gospel, whether it is through the daily broadcast or the many resources on our website. Scott and all of us on the Enjoying the Journey team are passionate 
about people coming to know Christ as Savior. We pray that you truly will enjoy the journey, but we also pray that you will bring others with you on your journey of following Christ.